This video is for D7, Quantum Calculations. The most important principle for the Quantum Calculations sheet is the energy of a photon. The energy of a photon can be calculated with the formula E equals HF, where E is the energy of the photon in joules, H is Planck's constant, which is, to three significant figures, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, and F is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation in Hertz. If you know the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation, you can find the energy of each quantum of that radiation, which we call a photon, in joules using this equation. Another useful equation is the general equation for waves, where the wave speed, V, is measured in meters per second. If this is electromagnetic radiation, we can replace the wave speed V with the speed of light C, which would take the value 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second on Isaac physics. F is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation, and lambda is the wavelength, which is measured in meters. These two equations can be combined to get the energy of a photon when the wavelength is given, as you can see here. Now in quantum calculations, the energy often is a very small number of joules. So very often we'll use an alternative unit for energy called the electron volt. One electron volt is the energy gained by an electron as it passes across a potential difference of one volt. And it is equivalent to 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 joules on Isaac physics. To convert from electron volts to joules, you multiply your energy by 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt. And to convert your energy in the other direction, you divide by that number. Importantly, the equations that we have looked at at the start of this video, the energy is measured in joules, not electron volts. An important principle in quantum physics is wave-particle duality. And these equations we've met so far are very useful when we look at the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. When we look at the wave nature of matter, then we have to use a different equation. You may know from classical physics that the momentum is the mass of a body multiplied by its velocity. In quantum physics, momentum is Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. This means that electromagnetic radiation carries momentum, that photons have momentum, and we can calculate that photon momentum using this equation. We can use the same equation rearranged to find the de Broglie wavelength of matter waves. The de Broglie wavelength of a matter wave can be calculated if we know the mass of the particles and we know the velocity of the particles by using this equation here. And last but not least, the kinetic energy of a particle can be calculated using the equation here. So let's have a look at an example question. Here we are asked to find the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation produced when a positron and an electron collide. And we are told that they have kinetic energy in this collision of one electron volt. The first thing we're going to do is calculate exactly how much energy is in this collision. The rest energy of the electron is just a little more than half of a mega electron volt. The rest energy of a positron is the same. And I think we can see from these numbers that adding one electron volt of kinetic energy isn't going to do very much. So the energy in our collision is 1.022 mega electron volts and a tiny bit more because of that one electron volt but I'm going to round those significant figures away anyway, so I won't write it. Now, because we are interested in the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation, we're going to use this equation here. However, there are two things we should be aware of. Firstly, this annihilation event is going to produce two photons, and so half of this energy will go into each photon. And secondly, this energy must be in joules first. So let's take that equation and substitute our numbers. 0.511 mega electron volts, or just a tiny bit more than that, is the energy of each photon. I'm going to multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt, because I want my energy in joules. 
Well, that will give me an energy in megajoules, but that's okay, we can work with that. And that's going to equal the Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light and divided by the wavelength. So I've just rearranged the equation so lambda is the subject. And let's have a look what happens to these units. The joules on the numerator cancels with the joules on the denominator. The seconds on the numerator cancels with the per second on the numerator. And so the unit you are left with is meters, which is indeed the unit that we want for wavelength. And what about this mega? Well, I've replaced that with 10 to the power of 6. So now what I can do is plug these numbers into my calculator to get my answer.